Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. The time has finally come for me to review the Power Distribution Professional by Ubiquity. This was released about a week ago and is a part of their Smart Power line. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You can find me on Twitter at MacTelecomN. And if you'd like to support the channel, we do have memberships, which will give you emotes for the live streams and will eventually give you videos a day early. We also have affiliate links down in the description below. Now let's take a closer look at the Power Distribution Professional and see what comes in the box. And this is the Power Distribution Professional. It has 16 resettable ports, which we could do that through the GUI interface in our Unify network. The 16 power control outlets are 125 VAC, 15 amp max with 60 Hertz, and the total power wattage is 1,875 Watts. And then we have our four USB-C ports, which are two amp max per port, or four amps with a 20 watt max total. We have our factory reset button, we have a circuit breaker, and then we have four ethernet ports total. Port 21 is only a 100 megabit per second connection. If you weren't using this to connect your ISP connection or your UDM pros, and you just wanna use it as a PDU, you would connect it to port 21. Port 22 and port 23 are meant for our UDM Pros or our UDM SEs. Features the 1.3 inch touch screen. We have an ethernet port on the back and this is made for our internet connection. And this is a one gigabit connection and we also have our power cable. It also comes with two rack gears if you're gonna be mounting this into your network rack. We have some cage nuts, we have some screws, and it also comes with feet if you're not gonna be putting it on racks or you're just leaving it on a desk. Now that we've seen everything that comes with it, let's go back to the computer and look at some of the other specs and how this is all connected. And that's our first look at the Power Distribution Professional. Like I said, when we were unboxing it, it has 16 remotely resettable power outlets. It works with cable modems, DSL routers, and optical network terminals with a USA-C plug. So you could use this in the USA and in Canada. And it would reboot your modem if it goes offline. I'm probably not going to use that feature, but that's something that you could do. And for me, the next feature is the best thing about the power distribution professional. So we have our three gigabit RJ45 ports, and this is reserved for virtual router redundancy. So what should happen if we have two UDM SEs, we could plug it into the PDU professional and the ISP connection in the back. If our one SE fails, it should fail over to our secondary. I still haven't plugged this in, but I believe that function isn't working yet, and that's gonna be a future firmware update. We have the four USB ports, and then we have our 1.3 inch touch screen. The PDU Professional comes in at $279 USD MSRP, and this is a 2U rack unit. Before we go downstairs and install this in my rack, let's take a look at the installation guide by Ubiquity. It just shows us how to put the rack gears on, and we could either load this at the front of the rack or the back, we would just have to reverse the rack ears. Under step five, this is the first type of connection. So connection A, we have our internet going into our Unify OS console and then in our switches into the first port, port 21 of our PDU. This setup wouldn't be for the high availability. If we scroll down a bit, we could see a different layout. So we have a PDU Pro at the top and then we have two UDM SEs and an aggregation switch. The top UDM SE, the WAN port, is plugging into the PDU Pro, and then our LAN port's connecting down into our aggregation switch. The same thing goes for the second UDM SE, and this will be for the high availability, and I will set it up like this once that function becomes available. Now let's bring the PDU Pro downstairs and get it all hooked up. Okay, and here's the state of my current rack. The front of the rack looks nice, but when we get down to the power, it is pretty messy. It's hard to get the RPS cables looking good. All these power cables, I'm hoping that we could clean up as I'm gonna put the PDU on the back here, and then we should be able to plug all the power cables in. So now let's get the PDU Pro installed. The PDU Pro is now installed on the back of the rack. What we have to do, we need to gracefully shut down my UDM SE. So I'll click on the display go over to the settings, and then we're gonna press shut down. Once all the device is shut down, we're gonna connect it to the PDU Professional.
Okay, now let me show you what has been done. At the top, this is my internet connection. I just ran these seven foot long slim patch cables. That's going from my ISP down to the PDU Pro, and we'll take a look at that in a second. Port 8 on the UDM SE is connecting to the PDU Pro on the 100 megabit per second connection, and we'll have to get it adopted into our controller. Here we can see our WAN port, that's also connected to the PDU Pro. Now we can see all the power connections are in the PDU Pro, and this PDU Pro is connecting to my UPS. We can see the activity light on port 21, but it's not showing up on the WAN port, even though my internet is working right now without this being adopted into my controller. And on the back, we have our ISP connection, and yet again, this isn't showing any activity lights, but it is working perfectly fine. Maybe after we adopt it into the controller, they will start moving around. Now we're back at the computer after the PDU Pro was installed in my rack, so we need to get it adopted into my network controller. We can see the USP PDU Pro is ready to be adopted, so under the status, we'll click to adopt. On the right hand side, we'll adopt the device. We can now see the PDU Pro adopted into our controller. Let's take a look at the settings that it features. When clicking on the PDU Pro, we can see the model, we can see the IP, and then we can see the device firmware version, and it's on 6.3.11. We can see the MAC address, the uptime, the memory usage, the power usage, which we're at 218.86 watts. We can see the energy, and then we can see the current that's going through it. For our uplink, this is that 100 megabit per second port, and it's going into my UDM SE on port 8. We can see the speed is saying fast Ethernet, we can see the power, we can see the packets, and we could also see the activity. Under our insights, this will show us our power utilization and how much we have left. We're barely scratching the surface of what this thing could handle. Now taking a look at the settings, we could see all of the power ports. So we could see our USB ports and then we could see our standard plug ports. And every one of them is enabled right now. We could also see the uplink, which is that 100 megabit per second connection. We could name the PDU Pro if we'd like and we could also take a look at the outlets. So we have our four USB outlets and then we have our other 16 ports. We can see which ports I'm connected to because they're drawing power and then from ports 12 to 20, I'm not using. We could disable these if we'd like. We could also click on the individual port. So let's click on port five. Under port five, we could give it a name and this is my UDM SE. We had power on and off this outlet and we could do a modem power cycle. If we had a modem plugged into this port, we could turn this on and this will power cycle your modem if the internet goes down when your modem is plugged into this outlet. So it will detect that the internet went down and it will do a power cycle of your modem. We could also do a manual power cycle. This will shut the port off and then turn it back on. Under the screen, we could change the screen brightness and we could also do the time or we could do rack multi-screen synchronization. Under services, this is all the same as any other Ubiquiti device. Same with the network, we could configure it with DHCP or static IP. And then under manage, it's also the same. We have the update, locate, restart provision, download information, debug, or we could forget this from our controller. Now, one thing we don't see either on the dashboard right here or under the outlet is those two WAN connections that would connect our UDM SEs. So as it stands right now, there is no way to do the high availability with the PDU Pro until a future firmware update. And that would be why we're not seeing any of those activity lights going on or off. Now, would I recommend the PDU Professional? Well, I probably would. At $299, that's pretty reasonable. If you look at something like the Wattbox or the CyberPower Managed PDUs, they're quite expensive. A couple marks that I think Ubiquity missed out on is adding a second power supply or an RPS port. They also could add multi-gigabit NICs as a lot of homes and businesses are going above those one gigabit speeds. I also don't see anywhere that we could have a secondary WAN connection into this PDU professional. Maybe in an upcoming version, maybe a PDU enterprise, they're gonna add these things, but I don't see it quite yet. But I'd also like to see them release the products when their main features are available right off the bat, as the high availability is the biggest thing for me. Let me know what you think about the PDU Professional in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.